Welcome back. Hope you enjoyed your dinner. Thanks to those of you who generously contributed to the Halls Museum Fund. Also, just a reminder, our silent auction is now closed. You can check on your bids at the auction table at the end of our ceremonies. You guys may have already recognized the voice on our first video profile. He's Pawtucket native, former Tolman hockey player, and my good buddy Dave Gosher, longtime radio voice of the Boston Bruins, and now the popular TV voice of the NHL's Vegas Golden Knights. Also, please note that sporting the personalized Hall of Fame jerseys of our honorees and accompanying them to the stage this evening are two high school stars at LaSalle Academy, Eliza Barker and Maeve Kelly. Like so many national firsts in Rhode Island's incredible hockey history, the USA's very first women's collegiate hockey program, the Pembroke Pandas, was established at Brown University in 1964. Today, we're proud to say that young ladies at five Rhode Island colleges and 22 Rhode Island high schools compete in women's hockey. Time now for another video tribute. Uh, our next video tribute is from a young man whose name has regularly appeared in the national news over the past month, a 2021 inductee of the Hall and the new head coach of the NHL San Jose Sharks, Cranston's David Quinn. Hi everyone, it's David Quinn here. I'd like to congratulate an outstanding 2022 Rhode Island Hockey Hall of Fame class that spans over eight decades of hockey greatness in Rhode Island starting with Don Meller, winner of the Malcolm Green Chase Trophy for his services to hockey throughout Rhode Island, in particular Cranston, where he started the CLCF hockey program, where he touched thousands of lives in Cranston, including mine, where I started my youth hockey career. Ralph Warburton, the first Rhode Islander to ever play in the Olympics, Dartmouth NCAA champion, one of the greatest players to ever come out of the state of Rhode Island. Two Boston College greats, which isn't easy for a BU guy to say, Tom Meller, uh, BC great, Olympian, played in the National Hockey League, probably one of the greatest defensemen to ever come out of the state of Rhode Island. Harvey Bennett Jr., again, another BC great, played in the National Hockey League, probably the greatest family in Rhode Island hockey. Rob Goudreau, Rob was an All-American at Providence College, uh, tied a single season record for most goals scored, Scored the most goals by a Rhode Islander in the National Hockey League and actually ironically scored the first two hat-tricks in San Jose Shark history. And Bob Belmore, who was an outstanding goaltender, led Providence College to the first ECAC championship in 1964 and continued to, to create a hockey legacy in Rhode Island through coaching and continuing in the National Hockey League. So again, congratulations to an outstanding Hall of Fame class 2022 Rhode Island Hockey Hall of Fame. Thank you, David. Best wishes in the upcoming NHL season. Now for the first of our 2022 Hall of Fame enshrinements. He starred on the ice and then coached some of the most famous goaltenders in men's and women's hockey history over a 60-year career in the game. J. Robert Bob Belmore. Bob Belmore was born and raised in Smithfield, Rhode Island. An all-around athlete, Bob never played youth hockey. Because of his exceptional skills as a baseball catcher, he was plucked off of the diamond at LaSalle Academy to 10 goal for his school team. He would become a standout goaltender, twice earning all-state honors for the Rams. In 1964, as a sophomore at Providence College, he backstopped his Friar team to its first ever ECAC championship and first ever berth in the NCAA Final Four. His outstanding play earned him a selection on the NCAA's all-tournament team. During his time at the college, Bob also showcased his baseball skills as a star catcher and third baseman, serving as team captain as a senior. He would later become a two-time All-American in men's fast-pitch softball, playing on three national championship teams. After graduation, Bob taught at his hometown high school, where he started Smithfield's successful hockey program. In 1972, he joined Lou Lamarillo's Providence College staff as a full-time assistant, a position he held until 1986, when he took charge of the day-to-day -day operations of PC's Schneider Arena. Along the way, he coached at numerous youth goalie clinics. In 1987, while his son Bruce was starting his own hockey career with the Friars, Bob left PC 
to serve as the goaltending coach for the NHL's New Jersey Devils, a position he held until 1991 when he returned to PC to pursue a master's degree in special education. At that time, Belmore also rejoined the college's hockey family, this time as the women's goaltending coach. Bob would go on to serve as an assistant coach for the women's team for 19 years, mentoring future Olympian netminders Sarah DaCosta and Genevieve Lacasse before retiring in 2012. The American Hockey Coaches Association honored him with their Assistant Coach of the Year Award in women's hockey that same year. The following spring, he was inducted into the Connecticut Fast Pitch Softball Hall of Fame. Over his coaching career, Bob has also been involved with the USA Hockey Elite Training Camps in Lake Placid, New York, and St. Cloud, Minnesota, leading the goaltending segment of the camps. Please welcome 2022 Rhode Island Hockey Hall of Fame inductee, Bob Belmore. Presenting Bob with his Hall of Fame medallion is his son, or former friar himself, Bruce Belmore. Well, I'm not a hundred. I'm 81, and I know the two guys that were up here before, Larry Reed and Don Miller, have shoes that are older than I am. So congratulations to the inductees, past and present. Uh, thanks to the committee for this great honor. Um, when I started out uh, in the Little League, not hockey, I took, came home and I told my parents I was going to be a catcher. And my mother says to me, oh, that's the dirtiest position. She's thinking laundry, right? Then I came home from LaSalle. I says, I think I'm going to be a goalie in LaSalle. My father says, oh, the most expensive position. <laughs> so you know where they were going right, with all that, right? But I was very lucky. Uh, two great things happened in your life. The first one is my lovely wife, Marguerite, who, you know, followed me through all my coaching career and put up with all that stuff when you were away all the time. And then the other thing that happened, which was one of the other great things in my life, was my, Bruce, my son Bruce and his lovely family, and he wound up being the uh, son-in-law of a hockey fan, Joe Hart, and he married Joe Hart's daughter, Eileen, and they have lovely triplets, two girls and a boy, Laurel, Joe Lee, and Brendan. So I was very lucky to go to great schools. I went to LaSalle and PC. At LaSalle, I had uh, Lou Samini. I think that's your... Uncle, your cousin. It was, it, it's uh, Vin's cousin. And I had Carl Toady as a baseball coach. Two great guys. And then uh, I became a teammate and a classmate of Lou Lamorello. And Lou, actually, uh, there weren't many uh, places where you could play hockey then. So uh, there was a parking lot near my house and uh, this building that had a... Uh, a uh, boiler room with a brick back on it. So I used to put all my equipment on with my street shoes, and Lou used to take slap shots at me. And I don't know, most of you old enough to remember, we didn't wear masks then, you know? So fortunately, Lou was pretty accurate, so I never got one gonged off the head. But um, this is a time to thank people, and uh, somebody said to me, you gotta thank the man upstairs. Well, my man upstairs was Lou Lamorello because he took all those shots at me, and Lou had a car, and that, like I said, there weren't many rinks around at the time, so on Sundays, we used to drive to Lynn, Massachusetts to go public skating, just to go around in circles to improve our skating. He also, once he got to be the head coach at Providence College, hired me as his, assist, as his assistant coach, and then when he went to the Devils, he hired me to be goalie coach there. So. He's my man upstairs, and he's been great to me, and we've had a friendship for years now. And the great thing about it now, he's the, the uh, general manager, uh, what's his title, Chris? General manager of the, the, uh, the New York Islanders. And the greatest thing about it is, I just call him up and I say, Lou, do you think I'll get a couple of tickets to the game? No problem. So I never have to spend a dime for a ticket to go to the, see the Islanders, which is great. Okay. <laughs> So all these people helped me along the way, 
But the two most important people in my life were my parents, who without their guidance and support, I would never have had such a, a wonderful journey. In, clo in uh, closing, what we do for ourselves stays with us, but what we do for others lives on. And I hope that I have accomplished this. Thank you. Speaking of the great players who graduated from the CLCF hockey program, our next inductee also comes from what is arguably Rhode Island's most famous hockey family. Harvey Bennett, Jr. Center Harvey Bennett, Jr. stood six feet four and used his size and reach to good effect during his five years in the NHL. He was born in Cranston, Rhode Island in 1952, the son of American Hockey League Hall of Fame goaltender Harvey Bennett and brother to four siblings who each played professionally, Kurt, Bill, John, and Jim. His father and Kurt preceded him into the hall as charter inductees in 2018. Harvey graduated from the city CLCF Youth League to earn all state honors at Cranston East High School. In 1969, he led his Thunderbolt team to the Rhode Island State and New England Championships. Harvey enrolled at Boston College upon graduation and spent three seasons with the Eagles before turning pro. His large frame and physical strength made him a difficult person to beat on faceoffs and move out of the slot. After scoring 31 goals for the IHL's Des Moines Capitals in 1973-74, the young pivot was signed as a free agent by the Pittsburgh Penguins. He spent most of the following season in the American Hockey League with the Hershey Bears, but made the Pens out of training camp in 1975. Partway through the season, Bennett was traded to the Washington Capitals, where he played for two seasons. His solid two-way play with the Caps earned him a spot alongside his brother Kurt on Team USA at the prestigious inaugural Canada Cup in 1976. It was the second of three occasions that Harvey would represent his country with Team USA. Two months after the Canada Cup Finals, Harvey was picked up by the Philadelphia Flyers, where he famously trained with world champion boxer Michael Spinks. His heavy two-way style and 12 goals helped the Flyers reach the Stanley Cup playoffs. Early in 1977-78, Bennett once again was traded, this time to the Minnesota North Stars, where he scored 11 goals. When the Stars failed to make the postseason, the big center was again selected to represent Team USA, this time at the World Championships in Prague. Harvey's final NHL season was spent with the St. Louis Blues. At that time, he and brothers Bill and Kurt were all playing in the NHL at the same time. Harvey and Kurt would retire in 1982 after playing two years together in Japan. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome 2022 Rhode Island Hockey Hall of Fame inductee, the very talented Harvey Bennett Jr. Presenting Harv with his Hall of Fame medallion is his lovely wife and partner, Trish Bennett. What the hell am I going to say now? <laughs> that, that took all my, uh, all the things I was going to say. Um, a lot of the people here know my dad, and, uh, and then my brother Kurt, not so much, but my dad, Mr. Meller, Ms. McLaughlin, uh, the Ternans, way back when, were very active in youth hockey, starting at the, the ice bowl. And Joey Kavnor, Danny DeMichael, Richie McLaughlin, uh, Teddy Bryant, the Bennetts, Tommy Meller, they were all playing there at that same time. And as they got older and they got better, we had no idea that we were any good. We were just a bunch of kids playing hockey at the ice bowl. And then Cranston East happened. Joey. Kurt, Danny, Richie, 
They had the best team in the country. It was unbelievable. In fact, uh, if I really looked at it, the four years starting from Kurt, Joey, Danny, all the way down to where we won the New Englands, I think there were about 13 kids that went to Division One. And then we had Tommy Meller who went into Upper New York and uh, went to Boston College from there. But what I wanted to do is say thank you to Mr. Meller, but I also want to commend Tommy. Tommy was a senior when I was a senior at Boston College, and he was the best player in the country. And what was inspiring to me is to see just how much Tommy loved hockey. No one loved it more. But uh, something that we, we found even more important, my wife Trisha and myself, is my dad was focused on, at that time, the likelihood of playing in the National Hockey League if you were an American didn't exist. Kurt, who was All-American, great, great player, came out of Brown University and uh, went to training camp at the St. Louis Blues. Now, Kurt was 6'3", great hockey player, and his reward for going to training camp was they offered him a minor league contract. Because at that time, college Americans didn't play in the National Hockey League. It just didn't happen. Well, my dad was going to pull him out, but Kurt stayed with it his first year. He, he was with Kansas City and a little bit with St. Louis the second year was uh, Denver and St. Louis, got traded to New York and went to Atlanta and became a star. The problem I had is I wasn't nearly as good as Kurt. <laughs> so, so when I came out of Boston College, I, I, I wouldn't even mention to anybody that I even thought about playing pro hockey. And so what we did before training camp, we took uh, karate, we took boxing, we took all that stuff because fighting was kind of big then and I had a big guy. And in training camp, uh, I got in 10 fights in nine games. <laughs> yeah. I, that's what it was gonna take. And so uh, I spent the first year in Des Moines, good year, 81 points. We won everything, went from there to Hershey, did pretty good, got called up to Pittsburgh a couple times the next year. It was Pittsburgh and it kept me in the NHL for a while. But uh, the thing that, that really meant a lot to me and my parents is what you do with hockey, because I never thought I'd play in the National Hockey League. So we had kids and our oldest, David, was a very good hockey player. And uh, basically we hoped and prayed we could get him into a, a good school. And fortunately, because he's a lot smarter than I am, he got to go to Princeton. And he does great now. Now I have a second one, a daughter, Brianna Bennett. She uh, didn't really want to play hockey. I said, it can help you go into college. And so she, she did it. She did it in prep school. And because she was such a good skater, Princeton thought she could help them. She's into Princeton. And then my third, Kendall. Kendall went to Deerfield. She was playing hockey and then it was decided that golf was her sport. And so, as it turns out, she was able to go to Brown. Now, all three of my kids are doing great in life, and I think a lot of it was using the hockey to get a, a great education. Now we have Jimmy Bennett, who had a son, Mac, great player, went to Michigan. His, uh, his daughters both went to BU, and then Carly went to Michigan playing field hockey. It was, it was amazing. So when I looked at hockey, hockey wasn't about being a pro hockey player. It was about getting an education. And uh, we did pretty good. Okay, thank you.
Speaking of great Rhode Island hockey families, our next inductee is the son of one of Rhode Island's all-time Hope High School and Brown University greats. He was recruited to Providence College, where he became the Friars' all-time goal-scoring leader before being voted one of the top 50 players in Hockey East history. Rob Goudreau. Rob Goudreau was a sniper, an offensive-minded right winger who spent four years in the NHL during the early 90s. In addition to his big league experience, he was a standout at Providence College and represented the United States on the international stage. Rob, the son of Rhode Island Hockey Hall of Famer and former Brown great Bob Goudreau, was born in Lincoln, Rhode Island. The early skills he developed helped lead his Edgewood Hawks team to the U.S. National Midget Championship in 1987. He was selected in the 1988 NHL entry draft by the Pittsburgh Penguins out of Bishop Hendrickson High School, where he earned All-State honors three times. Rob starred for four years at Providence College, tying the Friars' record for most goals in a season on his way to accumulating 103 goals over his PC career. Rob was named an NCAA second team All-American and was twice selected a Hockey East All-Star. He was voted Hockey East Rookie of the Year in 1988 and New England Player of the Year and finalist for the coveted Hobie Baker Award as the nation's best collegiate player in 1991. Rob represented the USA at the 1990 World Junior Championships and on May 30th, 1991, as he prepared for his senior year with the Friars, Gaudreau was picked up by the newly founded San Jose Sharks in the NHL Dispersal Draft. He made an immediate impact with the Sharks, scoring 23 goals as a rookie in 1992-93. Most notably, he collected the first two three-goal hat tricks in Sharks history in that inaugural season. Following that campaign, he scored six points in five games while playing for Team USA at the World Championships. Rob was a vital role player on the improved Sharks when they reached the playoffs in 1994, coming within one victory of reaching the semifinals. In January 1995, Rob was picked up on waivers by the Ottawa Senators. He spent two years with his new team before signing with the Swiss club La Chaux de Fonds. He returned in 1997 after scoring 42 points in 37 games for the club. Over his professional career, Rob earned the distinction of having scored the most goals in the National Hockey League of any native-born Rhode Island. Ladies and gentlemen, 2022 Rhode Island Hockey Hall of Fame inductee, Rob Gaudreau. Presenting him with his Hall of Fame medallion is his brother, a fine player in his own right, Scott Gaudreau. A proud moment indeed for his family and dad who are with us tonight. Hello, everyone. Good evening. What a great night. I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame committee especially Vince and Mal. You guys do a wonderful job. They were there the whole uh, last six months uh, making sure everything was taken care of. Uh, much appreciated. Congratulations to all the other inductees on this amazing honor. I'd like to thank my family who is here today. My brother Scott, my sister-in-law Lori, my nephews Shane and Perry. My dad, who started me in hockey, and is also a member of this Hall of Fame. What a cool event to be in the same Hall of Fame with your dad. <laughs> My mom passed away a year ago. Dads usually start boys in hockey, but it's the moms that keep the engine moving. After it was announced that my dad had been inducted or was going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. I was spending some time with my mom, who at the time wasn't in very good health. And she says to me, your dad got in the Hall of Fame. I said, yes, mom. She said, are you in the Hall of Fame? I said, no, mom. She said, you were way better than him 
Why the hell aren't you in the Hall of Fame? I'm sure mom is enjoying this honor and looking down on all of us proudly. My best friend, Mark Devine, and his wife, Cindy, who flew all the way across the country for this honor. Thank you to all my family. I love you guys. <laughs> to my Wanamoisic Country Club buddies, that golf club became my hockey rink, and those guys became my teammates for the last 25 years. Can't thank you guys enough for being here. And of course, all of the coaches along the way. All right, Rhode Island has been blessed with some of the most amazing hockey coaches over the years in all of the country. Thank you to the Rhode Island hockey community. You guys were always very kind to me. To the Zamboni drivers, rink managers, trainers, referees. You were all a little part of my success. I get asked occasionally, what was the key to my success in getting as far as I did in hockey? I had some talent and I worked hard. A lot of players have that. From the first day I started playing hockey, I wanted to play in the NHL. I was obsessed with it. If I had a few bad games, no problem. I'll get to the NHL. Had some lousy grades in school, who cares? I'm getting the NHL. Serious injury, I'll get to the NHL. I believe the biggest reason that I did make it that far was I never thought I wasn't going to make it. Not once. My belief was bulletproof. Through all those ups and downs in the game and in my growth in hockey, I didn't realize how bulletproof it was till long after I was done playing hockey. Faith in yourself is a powerful tool. As I've gotten further away from playing hockey, I get more proud with my accomplishments. And I get asked, what was the best part about playing the game? 20 years ago, my answer would have been the prestige of it, playing against your childhood idols, traveling all around the world. I could go on and on. But that's not it. It's what hockey taught me. Be a good teammate, discipline, accountability, the strength that it takes to overcome the inevitable struggles that one will encounter in their life. I finally realized that overcoming that obstacle is the way to get there. I use those same principles I use to climb the ladder in hockey in my everyday life. Hockey has been a wonderful companion and teacher. The last thank you I have for the night is to the sport of hockey. You have given me way more than just some memories on the ice. And for that, I am very grateful. Thank you very much. Now another tribute, a thank you really, from a young man who followed Robbie to Bishop Hendrickon in PC and is now the newest member of the NHL St. Louis Blues, Johnston, Rhode Island native, Nola Chari. Hi, this is Nola Chari and I just want to congratulate the inductees of the class of 2022 and uh, I just want to thank you guys for everything you did for Rhode Island hockey and paving the way for players like me and everyone else that comes from Rhode Island and uh, you guys deserve this and thanks again. Thank you, Noel. Well said. Best wishes to you with your new team this season. Some hockey players reach incredible heights over their careers. All-American, Olympian, NHLer, league MVP. Our next Hall of Fame honoree accomplished all of the above. Thomas Tom Neller. Defenseman Tom Neller was born in 1950 and raised in Cranston, Rhode Island. He developed his skills in the city's CLCF youth hockey program, co-founded by his father, and later starred at the Northwood School in Lake Placid, before being recruited to play at Boston College. As an Eagle freshman in 1968-69, Tom scored nine goals and 19 points. 
His scoring touch from the blue line continued with 21 goals and 44 points as a sophomore and 40 points as a junior. Tom also played 18 games for the U.S. national team that season, scoring a goal and five points in international competition. One of the highlights of Miller's hockey career occurred in 1972 when he played for the U.S. Olympic team, which brought home a silver medal from Sapporo, Japan. He also proudly represented the USA at the 1972 and 1973 World Championships. After taking the year off from school during his international appearances with the U.S. national team, Mello returned to B.C. for his senior season. In 30 games, he scored six goals and led the nation with 45 assists and was selected a college All-American. Tom was inducted into B.C.'s Varsity Club Hall of Fame in 1980 and his jersey was retired and hoisted to the Conti Forum rafters in January 2019. In 1973, Meller joined the NHL's Detroit Red Wings. He made the rounds in the Red Wings system that rookie season, playing 25 games in Detroit, 23 with the AHL's Virginia Wings, and six with the Wings' London Lions affiliate in the British League. Over the course of his well-traveled season, he accumulated 11 goals and 42 points. The following year, he played in his final NHL game with the Red Wings before skating the remainder of the season in Virginia, where he racked up 17 goals and 52 points with the AHL's Wings. In 1975-76, Tom played 34 games with Vostra Frölunda of the Swedish Elite League, scoring 8 goals and 16 points. He also suited up for 13 games with the Toledo Gold Diggers of the IHL, scoring 15 points. He returned for one final year of pro hockey with the Gold Diggers in 1976-77, where he averaged a point per game over 75 games. He went out in high style, winning the James Gatchin Memorial Trophy, given to the most valuable player in the International Hockey League. Ladies and gentlemen, our newest Rhode Island Hockey Hall of Famer, Tom Miller, presenting him with his Hall of Fame medallion is his brother and longtime amateur standout, Duke Miller. And of course, proudly looking on is his dad, Don, who created every opportunity for Tom and so many others to succeed in the game they love. Thank you so much. Pop, what a night. Unbelievable. I can't believe all the friends here. I... Uh, I want to thank you, Vin and Mal, for a great job. I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame committee. I look at the players before me, and I am humbled and honored to be a part of this list. I'd like to congratulate the other inductees, the Warburton family here tonight. I know Dad played with and against Ralph, and he tells me about his exploits in Dartmouth, uh, in the USA, and I think the numbers speak for themselves. Uh, Bobby Belmore, I think I remember you more as a third baseman uh, for Local 57. Dad used to take us down to Engineers Field on Gano Street, under the lights, and uh, we used to enjoy that fast-paced action. And congratulations on a great career as a player and a coach. Well done. And Rob, yeah, Bobby, way to go, man. And uh, Rob, it's the first time we're meeting tonight, but... Um, what an amazing collegiate career you had, a fabulous career, and a solid, solid career in the NHL. But it was, uh, I was actually a big fan of your dad's. I was, uh, he was older than I was. And um, when I was a, a youth, uh, I wanted to be an All-American and an Olympian, like your dad. And uh, I think it was uh, at a Brown University breakup dinner that my mom and dad went over and they told your dad uh, what a fan I was. And he wrote on the back of a, a paper plate, uh, to Tom, keep working hard and you too can become an All-American. And um, I, I think of that when I accomplish those goals. And in no means, <laughs> yeah, thank you, thank you, Bob. In no means do I want to disparage the Brown University hockey players who are here tonight because uh, I know at Boston College, Harvey, we didn't eat off paper plates. I think it was porcelain and silverware. But. And how about Harvey? I'll tell you what, my main man, I had so much fun with you our senior year at BC. And all I can remember 
is Harvey and I played our last career game together at the Boston Garden, the old garden. Uh, we had beat Cornell in the consolation game. And so <laughs> at the end of the game, Harvey and I are just lingering the last few uh, minutes on our career. And Harvey grabs the puck and says, come on, Tommy, let's go play pipe roof. We had this game. <laughs> we had this game at BC in practice where we get up to the net and we try to roof it for two points, hit the pipe for one point, and so that's how Harvey and I uh, finished our career. But I want to thank the Bennett family because uh, Harvey and Diana came down from Regina many years ago, raised six great kids, and I think your dad was so instrumental on uh, young kids playing in, in uh, Rhode Island. I know we used to go to the old Rhode Island Auditorium um, Harvey's dad, Harvey Sr., had retired, great star for the Reds, and we would go, and Sunday afternoons for $1 at noon, you could go and skate. There might be a couple of Reds like Bobby LaDuke, who's out there somewhere, and they'd be skating around. Ray Clearwater, I saw earlier, Buzzy Duchamp, um, but uh, Chuck Scherzer, Norm Caladine, who played for the Bruins, uh, the famous Johnny Gagnon, who was a star for the Montreal Canadiens. Um, and if you could understand his thick French accent, uh, there was wisdom in those words. You know, as you're coming around a guy, get that shoulder down, keep the puck, uh, keep yourself between the puck and the opponent, get that leg out. I mean, little nuances of the game that you just would not learn. And so uh, I thank the Bennett family for, uh, for all of them for, for that. Um, you know, I'm not standing out here. This Hockey is a team game, and I am nothing without all the teammates I've had. Obviously, can't mention them all, but there are a number of guys out here I played with and against, and um, it's just a great sport, and I'd like to thank all of them. That's why I'm here tonight. And with the coaches, you know, I got a great start from Dad. He told us the right way to play, played everybody, and... Uh, he, he did it the right way. I got a good start for sure. But I'd like to single out uh, one coach, and that is Murray Williamson. And uh, Murray was our coach on the 1972 Olympic hockey team. Um, prior to that year, in 71, when we uh, had camp in Bemidji, Minnesota, Murray had spent several weeks in the Soviet Union with Anatoly Tarasov, who is widely considered the father of Russian hockey. And um, the Russians uh, trained very differently than the Americans, I'll tell you that. Uh, so when we showed up at Camp Murray had taken good notes, and we were on the ice three times a day. We were running in the morning. We were bouncing balls on the stick. We were doing bands, yoga, lifting weights. Uh, yeah. I laugh because when I turn pro in Detroit, I go into the Red Wings locker room, and there's a big universal gym and the gym is used to hang your underwear after practice. <laughs> Only Ted Lindsay, who was an old retired pro who hung around the locker room, he was the only guy in there pumping iron, old school. But um, I just want to thank Murray. Uh, he made a big difference in, in my life, I know for sure. And I'd like to thank the guys, uh, Timmy and Dickie, who came tonight, uh, part of that team. And I want to talk about family because uh, you know, my siblings and I are very lucky to have my mom and dad. You don't pick your parents. You're, you're uh, you know, you're stuck with them. <laughs> we were stuck with you, dad. Not bad. Uh, and, you know, we had uh, two goaltenders in the family, uh, Donnie and Paul. Uh, but the rest of us were fairly normal in the family. <laughs> but I always looked up to my brother, Dookie, who's here tonight. And uh, I can remember um, Dukey was a good player at Cranston East, a beautiful skater. And uh, he came over, uh, he, was, he was playing out of town. And um, Howie Krins, who was coaching the Cranston East hockey team, came to the door. And uh, Dukey had, had a cut on his chin, had a pretty good gash. And now, Dukey, I don't know if you fell off the bus or if it was a, a blade, but I was impressed. 
you know, he took the bandit off, stitches, you know, and you know what? That was kind of a badge of honor. When you're a hockey player, you got to get stitches, you got to lose a couple of teeth, you know, kind of old school. And um, I just loved, I just loved playing hockey. But uh, I want to thank, uh, or I want to recognize, uh, I have three great sons. Russ, Tommy, Beth, your family, Caitlin, Kylie, the one who's asleep in your lap, Bo, and uh, Mikey and Pam. And I'm just so proud of each one of you guys, who you are, what you've become, and uh, carrying on the name that I, I so luckily in, uh, inherited. And uh, my wife, Roxanne. I love you so much, babe. You are the best. You make me better. You are uh, put yourself in front of me all the time, and that does not go unrecognized. So we've had 25 great years, and I can't wait for the next 25. And, and don't chuckle. My father is old. <laughs> and I want to be just like him. <laughs> and mom and dad... What can I say? Dad, you know she's upstairs right now. She's playing the piano. She's singing. We lost our mom about five months ago, but it was an absolutely beautiful send-off. Thank you to Father David Kavanaugh, who's here, and all of the friends who love mom so much and their family. And she is watching over us tonight. She is listening to everything we say. And I just want to thank you and her for the decision you made to send me to Northwood School. I had an opportunity to go up to Northwood School uh, when I was 14 years old, go away to school. And, you know, Dad's friends were saying, oh, Cranston, that's a great program. What are you doing? Uh, but Dad sacrificed. He put me in a situation where... Um, as a 14-year-old, I'm playing against college freshmen. We have an expanded schedule. We're playing junior teams in Canada. Dad, without that, I am not here tonight for sure. And thank you very much. And, and, and I thank Mom because uh, that was hard for you to do, I know. But without that, you know, it's, I'm just not here. So I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, Dad. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I think... All of our siblings would agree that when you raise a kid, you try to teach them the right thing, but then you have to let them go. And I think that's what you did to all of us. You just taught us what was right and what was wrong, how to act, how to be respectful, how to be honest, trustworthy, have a good work ethic. And Dad, you have inspired, you inspire everyone you meet. And, and you had an amazing award tonight and yes, you help so many people in the game of hockey, but more so everyone who meets you and everyone who comes in front of you are so impressed with what you are and who you are and what you stand for. I love you, Dad. I'm so proud to be your son. Thank you very much. I believe it was that Soviet hockey coach that Tom mentioned, Anatoly Tarasov, who once said, a good pass comes not from the hands, but from the heart. What we've seen here tonight is a lot of assists from the heart. This seems like a good time to say thanks again to our presenting partners whose generosity and support make these annual events and all of the work of the Hall of Fame possible. Special gratitude here to the Chase, Moran, and Lamorello families, and to Providence College, Rhode Island Hockey, the Rhode Island Reds Heritage Society, and the NHL and NHL Players Association for their generous financial support. And thanks to our many program advertisers and all of you for your kind contributions this evening. Thank you. The Rhode Island Hockey Hall of Fame could not accomplish its mission and initiatives without your generosity and support. Ironically, our final inductee of the evening was the very first honoree ever to grace our stage when he was presented with the inaugural Chase Award for his lifetime of contributions to Rhode Island hockey. Tonight, he becomes an honored and deserving member 
of the Hall of Fame itself. Ralph A. Warburton. Ralph was born in Cranston in 1924. Nicknamed Benny as a youth, Ralph starred on CYO teams in his Edgewood neighborhood before becoming an all-state hockey selection at LaSalle Academy in 1941. He then went on to star at Dartmouth College, where he helped them on their way to a 46-game winning streak. A prolific scorer, he was described by his USA Hall of Fame mentor, Ed Jeremiah, as the best back-checking, hardest-working forward I have ever coached. His teammates concurred, voting Ralph captain of the Big Green that captured the 1947 National Championship. Later that year, under the team name of the Hanover Indians, Ralph's Dartmouth squad captured the National AAU title in Providence. A powerful skater and deaf puck handler, Warburton was a member of the American Hockey Association team, chosen to play in the 1948 Winter Olympics and Sam Moritz. Ralph did not disappoint. He scored a remarkable 16 goals and five assists in the USA's eight Olympic contests. On his return to the USA, Ralph helped Lou Peary's Rhode Island Scarlets to the Atlantic Amateur Hockey League Championship and then to the national AHA title in Ohio. He would go on to play professionally at the minor league level, turning in several high-scoring seasons, including a 33-goal campaign as a Boston Bruins farmhand with the Boston Olympics in 1951. After his playing days, Ralph became a dedicated youth hockey coach and a pioneer on-ice official, helping to build the Rhode Island Ice Hockey Officials Association. He was elected president of the National Ice Hockey Officials Association in 1966, becoming the only Rhode Islander ever to serve in that capacity. In 2018, he was honored by the Rhode Island Hockey Hall of Fame as the organization's first recipient of the annual Malcolm Green Chase Memorial Award, given for lifetime achievement and contributions of a Rhode Islander to the game of hockey. He worked many years as a stockbroker and sadly passed away on Christmas Day 2021, just weeks shy of his 98th birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, accepting on behalf of her remarkable, talented father is Ralph Warburton's beloved daughter, Martha Bro, presenting her with her father's medallion is her son and Ralph's grandson, Kyle Bro. I thought going last, everybody would have left by now, so this is very, very amazing here. Um, Dad loved hockey. I know, I now love hockey, but that was not always the case. My dad was involved in coaching boys hockey, which included my older brother Paul, for two to three hours every Saturday morning from October to March. So as the younger child, I had to rise up around 6 a.m. to make the long trip with my parents and brother to me in auditorium before Route 95 was built. I also spent many evenings at the Shipyard Ice Bowl, which was an incredibly cold rink while Dad refereed and coached. The good news about the Shipyard, besides the vending machine ice cream sandwiches, was always being able to peek through the hole of the fence to watch the drive-in movies next door. I wonder if anybody remembers that. <laughs> Additionally, I was not fond of the smell of my brother's hockey gear spread out all over the bedroom floor as it had to be aired out all week. But that changed over time as I grew to understand the game a bit, which included the terms like offsides and icing. In Dad's last few months, almost a year ago, while emptying out his 60-year-old dresser, I came across this, which for those of you that cannot see it, it's a ratty-looking notebook with the cover missing. I tossed it in the trash, but then something stopped me. I picked it up, looked at it again, and wanted to see if anything was written on it. This notebook, which I never even knew existed, is over 73 years old and was Dad's two-month journal from January to March of 1948 with daily entries of his travels in Europe when he was in the Olympics. Later that week, when my dad was having one of his better days, I told him what I had found. I asked permission if I could read 
with him some of his entries which he agreed to. I read what I could of this journal over the course of the next six weeks on his good days. Being a lefty, Dad's handwriting was barely legible, but, the, but as I tried to read the words, he would fill in the blanks and add in more narratives to his entries. For those of you that knew Dad, you know he had an incredible memory for details. Hockey provided me with those special moments, and for me to get a snapshot of what Ralph was like at age 24, 73 years ago. How many people get to have that experience with their father? By the way, Dad liked the word carousing. He always used to tease me as a teenage, in my teenage and college years, if I had been out carousing. Come to find out, he did a bit of carousing, but not so different from any typical 24-year-old male hockey player. On the Queen Mary, he enjoyed the squash courts, the Turkish baths, and had some late-night poker or bridge, car bridge card games, along with some quote and unquote good scotch on his voyage. He made significant amount of visits to nightclubs until the wee hours of the morning, causing him to miss many a breakfast. He also recorded how many goals he scored each game, how he played, how the team played overall, as well as the condition of the ice that day. So you see, without hockey, I never would have had that special time with Dad. I want to thank the Rhode Island Hockey Hall of Fame Committee for this wonderful honor and this hockey family for this honor for Ralph. Dad would have loved to have been up here giving his acceptance speech, but as many of you know, he left us early Christmas morning in 2021. Lastly, Ralph loved an audience. If you can remember, if you were here for the Chase Award, he went on and on and on. <laughs> and his speech would have most definitely been a lot longer than this one. Once again, thank you all for this award, the work you put into this event. And in closing, I love and miss you, Dad. Thank you. Speaking of the work that goes into this, uh, as we prepare to send you home for the evening, um, somebody's birthday is tomorrow. So if you'll help me, we'll all sing happy birthday to Vin, whose birthday is tomorrow. All together now. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. We hope this has been an enjoyable evening for all of you. We hope to see you here again next year with the enshrinement of our 2023 class. Before we leave, we'd like to ask all of our honorees to join us on stage here for a class of 2022 photo, wearing your Hall of Fame jerseys and holding your Hall of Fame medallions. Once all of our honorees are on stage, everyone here is welcome to approach if you want to take your own photos. Please check out and pick up your winning silent auction bids before you leave. Remember that Hall of Fame nominations from the public are accepted throughout October and November using the official forms available on the Rhode Island Hockey Hall of Fame website. Thank you all. Good evening. Thanks for letting me be here tonight. Safe travels. Bye-bye.